Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. And for everybody who's new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. So today I am sharing some journals that are going up in my Etsy shop and I'm so excited about these. They have been, oh, I think I've been learning how to do them for a few months now. There's three that I've made and there's actually one that my mom has made that I'm going to share with you guys. She, I have mentioned it over and over again, has been the inspiration for me to get started with journal making. She loves journals and yeah, she's been into them for a long time. So it's an honor for me to get to list her book and I'm excited about that. So let's get into the journals. All right, so the first journal I will share is my mom's. Just give you a little overview here. She has it tied with this ribbon. My mom's style is very feminine, um, shabby, primitive. She likes all of this kind of stuff and I really see a lot of it coming into play with this book. So for those of you who love that kind of style, you are going to love this journal. It's awesome. Okay, so she made it out of a Reader's Digest book. There's two signatures in here. It is definitely a chunky journal because of all the beautiful vintage pieces that she's used in here so I can't wait to flip through and show you that. She's written this little note here about her journal so I'm very <laughs> very happy with that. I haven't done that yet but she has a little letter that goes with this journal about the journal and she's calling it Learning to Fly. Just a little bit of what she mentions about this book that um, she's opened up her vintage trunks and pulled out some of her vintage embroidered and crocheted lace pieces, adding to them some wonderful papers and ephemera from Tim Holtz, Pinterest, as well as some bits and pieces I've collected through the years while searching through vintage thrift shops and antique stores, garage and yard sales, and so many others. So pretty much everything she's used in here is vintage, and I already know that, so that's awesome. I love the book very chunky book so if you like chunky this is for you has some primitive style stitching here and binding and i just think it's lovely okay so here she has this fabric wrap around and i think she mentioned that this had come from my grandma's collection of trims which i think that's awesome that she shared that and i love the way that it wraps around the cover here and she has this Tim Holtz bird paper here with some fun lace on the cover. When you open it up, some Tim Holtz here on the front, some flips and pages for writing, lots of stitching. She has added so much stitching on here. Some ephemera pieces tucked throughout the book. paper stitched on guideposts, some doily pieces, some vintage fabric tabs. She has some Pinterest images here on the inside, some tags that she's created. Let's see if I can get this put back together <laughs> a little bit. Here she's made a little tuck with some scrap paper and some lace. I'm not sure, I haven't counted how many pages are in this journal, but I'll list it in the listing and in the description box down below. So she has some more ephemera tucked in here. It's fun, nice little tuck spot. Lots of little lace tabs throughout the journal. And here she has this little notepad she made, one of those time cards with some papers and a paper doily that's been stained. A little paper tab here, a pretty paper clip with some laces and ribbons. And here she's stitched on this pocket. I'm sure it has some treasures in here. Regency fold piece of paper. A 
And she has some doily stitched over a vintage piece there. That's super cool. She's done stamping and stitching and laces. Another tuck spot here. This is a fun pocket with some scrapbook paper. She's tucked another little bits and pieces. When my mom journals, she loves the bits and pieces of journaling spots. So she's added quite a few of these in here. It's the other side of that envelope. She has added some lace to that. Spread your wings. It's a really pretty image. Tucked in here and another little bit of paper there. And here she has an envelope that she's used. And I like how she has that little girl image in there. And then here she has this on some board and she's stained it up a little bit. I think this is a tea bag she's added to the top. So that's a fun journaling spot. And she has some stamping. Another vintage trim, a journaling card, a piece of doily. The other side of that envelope. No, this is the other side of that printed paper. Some note paper in here. A piece of doily that flips out. And do some extra writing there. This was that guide post cover she used. Stitch some trims on. And some more pieces tucked into this tuck spot. With some doily. Here she has a tuck made out of a tea stain doily. She has stamped some birds on there. Love this pocket she's made. So she has it stitched around the page and then she has this fun pin here and it has a postcard inside. Cool. And that's a very pretty vintage piece with some stamping down here. Here's the other side and that's another tuck spot. You can add some things in. She has a vintage hem tucked here with some paper and a tag. Here she's made a pocket out of paper with some of that vintage laces and she's added some note paper. Very pretty, very delicate and feminine. I love it. So here's some stamping with some more crochet doily, some more lace, and she's added this fun clip here. I don't even know what that is. Is it like a roller clip? Something fun. Yeah, it's like a hair clip. That's fun. And another piece of paper here. Pretty tea staining transfer. Here's some lace stitched on. Another lace belly band here with some more paper. Stitched together. Little flip journaling spot here. And this copied book page. Another little tuck here with some paper. Ephemera that she stitched with some lace. Some more pretty lace. And here's the center of this signature. She's tied it with some fun primitive twine that matches the book. Love this lace here and the way that she stitched it to that paper. She just has more writing cards and stamping here. And here's some more laces, another fun tuck with some lace, just lace, lace, lace everywhere in this book. Here's some fun trims on a paper clip, some more lace here, this one's fun, <laughs> I love how she did that, super cute. So that's wallpaper. I think that's wallpaper that you can write on. That's a tuck spot, which is some lace. Then here's another paper tuck with some ephemera. Stationary with these laces attached to it here. This is a fun little envelope that she made. There's lace here, a tuck spot here with some little scrap note paper here. She's stitched this piece of doily 
with these laces here. You can see, I tell you, this is where I get my stuff <laughs> from my mom, who's so nice to share it with me. And then some paper tucked in there. And then another fun piece of doily here. And this flips out. And there's more writing spot there. on here and then she has her envelope pocket or library card pocket in the back with some more stamping to be continued that's fun so that is my mom's journal learning to fly and I absolutely love it like I said very feminine fun mix of primitive mix of shabby just super fun these next three journals I created learned how to make these hardback books. I took Nick the Booksmith's class and I'm super glad that I did. I learned how to make her hardcover book. Um, the Curved Spine with the Hidden Signatures. Lots of fun and I feel like I learned a lot. So Nick, if you happen to see this video, thank you so much for offering your course. I really enjoyed it and had a lot of fun making these journals. So these books have a two and a half inch curved spine. You can see here. And um, hidden sewn in six signatures. The covers measure six inches across and eight and three quarters inches long. So it's a nice, big, heavy, sturdy book. These are very chunky full journals as well. I was in a mood, probably because my mom and I were working and talking together and I would see pictures of her journals and I'm like, oh, I wanna go the whole feminine route too. So these journals, are kind of stuffed. This is the most stuffed, so the other ones don't have quite as many laces and trims in it. I can't remember exactly how many pages are in here, but I will definitely leave a count in the description box of the Etsy if you're interested. There is a lot of pages in this journal. So here on the inside I have a library card, really pretty bohemian type paper, which is kind of the theme of this journal some pretty trims throughout the book. Lots of stitching, lots of tea dyeing. Pocket here. These big tags have paper sewn onto the back. Edith Holden book pages. Tracing paper. Here's a little pocket you can use as a tuck spot here. Some Edith Holden paper. Some ruffles that I made. Another tuck spot here. And the end of the first signature. And this has some doily cutups and I have a little gold charm on a gold safety pin there. Some more pretty trims. This is a tuck spot that I made with a table, vintage table linen that I stitched around to the other side of the paper. So I made a tuck spot out of that. Then they have this really pretty image here of this girl. I loved how she matched the book. I'm calling her Bohemian even though she <laughs> probably wasn't intended that way, but I really like the way she matches the book. So then I use this vintage book music page called The Bohemian Girl here with her. Thought that was fun. Some more tucks and pockets with tags throughout the book. Some Midori size graph paper stitched into these books envelope with a tuck, did some stamping here, the other side of that music page, and the other side of that table linen I made another tuck out of. Third signature has some doily pieces stitched here, some ribbons and laces, some more Edith Holden, Always look upward. Love that. Some more tucks, some trims, another pocket. So this like double corner tuck here. Some 
I like putting these book pages in this way because then you can either clip it and keep something secret inside of it or you can use the pages for whatever you like. Added that little piece of trim there. And here's the beginning of what? The fourth signature. Some vintage lace here. Little daisy charm up here. A little tuck spot with some vintage paper. There's some tracing paper. The last rose of summer. Another tuck spot. Draft paper. Flip out here. This is a fun vintage piece I had picked up. Little fabric flip, so you can do some secret writing there. Tuck spot here. Another lace tuck. This is a fun charm. It has a little pearl in there. <laughs> I thought that was fun. Here's the stitching from this pocket I made from another vintage piece. That was really pretty. Match the blue in the journal. And then this is from a book page by Gwen Frostick. I think I've mentioned her before, but she's a popular artist in our area and author, oh, I don't know, from a long time ago because she was lived in Michigan. So very pretty artwork. I love her book pages. This one has a poem on the back. Tracing paper, more of that Midori paper. I love how that fits in this book. The other side of that Gwen Frostick. And what I love about her art is you can journal right over the top and that would just be beautiful. All the journaling you could do in there. <sighs> love that. Another pocket here. And then just the last signature. I think this is the last signature. Got some vintage lace, a little feather charm. A pocket here. Some fun transfer here. Another double tuck. The tag. Other side of that music paper. This page, since it was feathers, I stitched on a real feather. <laughs> I thought that was fun. It has been printed, obviously, but I just stitched the spine down to the paper and then added some doily too. It's a flip. Then here's an envelope tuck spot that I stitched on. Here's the envelope with that piece of doily and then there's a piece of paper in there. Other side of that music paper. Just fun advertisement there. Another double tuck. This is a pocket I made out of that time card. Added some more tags. And that is the end of this book. So this one is just a fun bohemian style. This next book has a fun gray whitewashed painted cover with the raised impressions here. One little corner flourish here. Two and a half inch spine again. And the same dimensions as the last journal. I've used some black velvet ribbon here that I got from Tammy. Thank you, Tammy, for sharing that with me. It's a beautiful piece in this book. So this journal is super feminine again. Lots of floral print papers. I absolutely love these papers. Library here in the pocket. Library card here on the front cover. Lots of tucks, pockets, stitching. Again, Gwen Frostick. Love her poetry, super fun images, tracing paper, double tucks with tags. The number of pages is the same as the last book and they'll be in the listing. Some vintage Rolodex cards and like I said, gorgeous papers. Love this. So this is an example of Gwen Frostick. Completely blank page and then it says, Tread softly in the woods of spring. The jack in the pulpits are growing there. Like, how simple is that? It's gorgeous and a whole page for you to journal on. Some poetry here. 
channeling space and tucks. I always send a bag of extra goodies with my books too. Here is some organ music that I have, and I love it because it's longer than tall, so I can do some fun things with it. And here I've stitched some scrap paper onto this tab for extra journaling, and I love that. I do that throughout the book. I will be doing more of that, because that was fun. Little tuck spot here, flip out here. Here's the other side of that music. So it's folded over and made a pocket. And I used some scrapbook paper here and made a little tuck. And then the back, you can add a photo or do something fun to that. A little tuck spot, glassine bag. And that's the end of that signature. And here's the beginning of this one. Fun ruffle. one is stuffed. If you empty these books out, I've, I've filled them up, but if you empty them out, it'll be a little less bulky. So writing would be easier. Flip out envelope. Gwen Frostick book again. Fun artwork here. Little tuck spot here. butterfly or it's a bow super cute flip out here love the black and the pink in this book so here's another music sheet I've made a pocket out of that and stitched some scrap of paper I think this is my favorite paper oh it's just beautiful some vintage note paper here tracing paper Here's the other side of that music paper, and I stitched some paper on for journaling. Nice fun tuck there. And the end of the signature. Here is the start of the fifth signature. Fun little bubble tuck here. There's one plastic paper. Tracing paper. Fun transfer. And here's the center tuck in the center of this signature. Pocket. Pretty bow <laughs> lace here. And then here's a little flower charm. And the last signature. Here on this piece of music paper, I stitched a piece of paper over it and added some scrapbook paper. Blank on the back, paper bag, more tuck. More journaling over that music sheet. Another tuck spot here. Another tuck here. And that is the end. And then last but not least for me, this is possibly the this is the last one I made and probably my favorite out of the three that I created. <laughs> So this book is all about the lavender, and for the first time ever, I named a journal. It inspired me, <laughs> and I call this one Love Letters. It's very shabby. Everything about it is lavender, and I'm loving it. So this is full of laces and trims. Touch of blue here with the purple. I have this charm here, sparkly crown, and then this really pretty pink charm here. So. Use some coffee dyed seam binding for a closure. 
And then here in the front, I've used the Prima Tales of You and Me paper that has been discontinued, but I don't need to hoard it, so I'm sharing that again. I also used a couple sheets from Prima's Wild and Free stack, so lots of pretty papers in here. So here I made a music sheet envelope with some scrap paper. Because I called it Love Letters, I stuck a lot of envelopes and things in it. This says in love in French. I can't pronounce it, but I looked it up and that's what it says. <laughs> so I just have that here in the front of the first signature. I used a vintage table piece with these purple butterflies and I love them. Look at the um, little flowers that have been stitched in there. I love it. So I made pockets out of that. This is stitching and the bottom here is the original stitching and I just made them into pockets. All of the paper in here has been Kool-Aid stained. The pages in the book are Kool-Aid. And the pages that I've used to add to it is hibiscus tea. And I will show you that. It gives different variations of lavender and I just think they are all beautiful. This is some blue stained paper my mom made, and I think she used cabbage. Mom, <laughs> I can't remember what you used, but I love the fact that it's blue and it matches like the trims that I have. So whatever that is, I'll leave it in the description box down below. This is the hibiscus dyed paper, so it has a different kind of purple. So this is like a secret tuck spot here, but you can still write here too. Love that. A little diamond gem. And the second signature, this gray trim here, the pocket, pretty, more butterflies here. It's the center of the signature, and this is hibiscus tea dyed, and I love how heavy, heavily stained that is. And I just used some um, stationery from my childhood with these purple pansies. Everything is purple in this book and I love it. So more stuff here. This is also from that butterfly table piece. I used the corners and created some tucks here. Another very <laughs> chunky book. Lots going on here. The paper is heavy cardstock, so it makes it stand up a little bit. Third signature. Some laces and trims. Vintage ledger. I didn't stick quite as much random ephemera in here because I wanted it to stay pretty, but I will definitely send some along. whoever decides they want this book to use. Some more hibiscus stained envelopes, tucks. I actually did dye this piece of lace with hibiscus tea. It didn't turn out as much, but it does have a purple cast to it, so that's fun. Another flip out here. More tags and tucks. Another one of those envelopes I made. Fascination. Super pretty. I have to make more of those. Those were super fun. I have this shabby fabric poking out of the back here. Tea stained. This one had more tea staining on it than the other butterflies. Tucks and pockets and lots of writing space. Here's just another little <laughs> journaling tag thing. I 
love how this even says lavender water on it. Perfect. Here's a little book I made out of a piece of vintage dictionary paper. It says lavender here and it's been hibiscus tea stained. Added some trim and it's just some scrap paper for extra writing tucked in this lace tuck. Another little crown here. Okay, now here's where I might have just been working too long, but <laughs> when I got to this sheet of paper and I had so much butterfly stuff going on here, I saw this design of a butterfly stained into the paper. Like the transfer was butterfly and I'm like, oh my goodness, that's so cool. Like see, there's even a little, like it just, it's just so cool. So I had to take my machine and stitch that butterfly so others could see it too because I thought that was super fun. So there's half of a butterfly there. Another flip. Tucks and envelopes. And a little bit more. <laughs> and that is the end the end of this book. This is the super pretty love letter. Okay, you guys, so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Again, all the information about these books will be in my Etsy shop. I've had a lot of people ask me about the books. The link is in the description box down below. So if you click and open the box that's under this video, you'll see the link to my shop there and you can go over and check them out if you're interested. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. See you next time. Bye.